How's it going people? This is uh, Robo2612 back with episode 21 of Operation Premiership with Coventry City and uh, it's the start of the season um, transfer review plus the uh, pre-season and first few fixtures of the season. So we'll get straight into the transfers now because there are quite a few of them especially going out. Um, most of them are on loans. So we'll get through to them. So first out was Nikolai Topol Stanley. Um, he was brought in by my director of football at the start of our first season in the championship. He played around about 40 games for us, um, most of them being at left back. Um, he covered the position when I needed him to, especially last season with Sabai being on international duty with Morocco. But he's been picked up by Bristol City on a free. He won his first team football and I couldn't offer it him, so he's gone there. Obviously, William Edgingueli has left to go to N Avant de Guingamp on a free transfer. Um, his form for them hasn't been the best. Um, get to that. So, five appearances for them so far. He's been sent off once, 6.62 average rating. He's getting nowhere near the, the sort of form that he was with us. He was ever present for three years with plus seven average ratings each time. So really good player, really big miss, but we have got something to replace him. <clears throat> uh, Paul Oates, one of my young Welsh talents, uh, has gone on loan to Crew for 55 grand for the year. Just hoping that he can improve his uh, defensive stats a little bit, marking and tackling especially. Everywhere else, he is a really good defender. He's got good influence, fantastic determination and bravery, and his physical stats are incredible. Um, and as we can see here, his his development is going a little bit. Uh, he's got a lot better since he came into the club. But I've got high hopes for him, and at 20 years old, he does need to start improving these defensive stats now. Uh, next out was Ben Clapperson. Um, he's not a great player. He's gone alone to Cr to Preston in the division below. Um, it's gonna, probably going to be an end of season release for me. I, I don't really think I'm going to be using him. David Jackson, another player. I bought him in for 80 grand from. Um, I think it was Glenn Torren, was it, uh, in, the, in the Irish leagues? Um, yeah, uh, Glenn Arvin, sorry. Um, he's he's a good player, but I don't know if he's quite at this standard. Uh, he went on loan to Mansfield last season without making an appearance. He's on loan at Grimsby this season, the Blue Square Premier, and um, he's improving a little bit, but he's going to need to improve a lot if he's going to be challenging for the first team football here. Next out was Cillian Smith, I'll get on to him in a minute. Arcadius Stanislavski again went out on loan to my feeder club Nuneaton, along with Thomas Button, who again rejoined them on, on loan. He's a fantastic prospect. And I'm just hoping to get them so, both of them first team football to improve the stats a bit. Uh, Gwyn Hughes and Corey Lloyd, another two of my young Welsh guys, uh, they've gone out on loan to another new uh, feeder club for me, Farnborough, in the Blue Square South. And John Warmgore, the Dutch winger and striker, has also gone out on loan to Nuneaton. He's got some fantastic potential, potential ability as a Premier League uh, player, so hopefully he can fulfil that. Filippo Clementini, I'll get on to him in a second. Jesse Lingard, a uh, good attacking midfielder across, the, across all three positions, um, but I didn't think I was going to be able to use him as much as he'd need to to progress. Uh, at the age of 22 he does need to start getting some first team football so I've loaned him out to York he was at Crewe last season he had a decent season there scoring 7 in 38 so hopefully he can improve at York um, he is improving in a couple of areas but we do need to get him some first team experience so he's gone there uh, Sebastian Dietrich um, this is probably going to be a make or break season his, his stats have not gone as I would like to, them to he's been here for two years now uh, Doncaster and Notts County have had him on season long loans so far and he's only made 10 appearances in League 1 he's now dropped down to League 2 he seems to be a, uh, playing a few games there but this is a make or break season if he doesn't start to improve I'll probably be getting rid of him at the end of the year Connor Thomas a really good prospect in the centre midfield come through the academy um, he's a good midfielder, got good passing, teamwork work rates really good, fitness is really good as well. Um, but I felt like I needed to give him a season of first team football again. Uh, we used him a little bit in the uh, League One and then less in the Championship, so I loaned him out. He then spent the season on loan at Chesterfield last season. Uh, he's gone to loan to Doncaster, where he is a first team player for them this season. So hopefully he can uh, improve and maybe come back to challenge for a first team spot next season. Uh, Lewis Rankin. 
he's an alright player but he's probably going to be leaving the club uh, his stats just aren't what's needed for this level he played a few games for us in the injury hits spell at left back in the league one but um, it's probably going to be his last season then I'll be looking to get rid of him at the end of the year Jordan Willis is a really high prospect but he does need to improve in a few areas uh, to become a first team centre half he's only six foot so really we need to get his jumping up a bit uh, so that he can beat the big strikers in the air uh, he's had a he's been on loan every season since I joined Mansfield the first year then Rochdale then he went to Fleetwood last season didn't get as many first team games as I would like but his average rating was good so he's now at Leighton Orient in League 2 again hopefully he can prove to be a really strong player for them and maybe come back to challenge or be a squad player next season um, Lewis Garner he looks like an, an alright player but um, whether he'll be able to challenge for a first team place here I don't think he will he's gone out and loan to Wickham I, I sent him into my feeder club in Neaton last season he only scored 1 in 12 um, so we'll see how he does in League 2 it's a bit of a step up for him but he's playing for them at the moment which is good news uh, Darren McQueen I signed f uh, after he was released by Tottenham He's again he's an average player but I don't quite think he's up to the standards of championship uh, he's gone out and loan to Oxford he spent last season on loan at Wickham and, the pre, uh, and Wrexham as well so two league two sides he's now to make the step up to league one let's see how he does this season and if he does well he may be able to get into the squad for us and Franco Scarlatta again didn't think he was going to get as much first team football as he needs to aid his development at his young age he's a really good midfielder though and he's gone out on loan to Leighton Orient as well in league two uh, he spent Bit last, bit at the end of last season on Leighton and Eaton, uh, where he did really well. He's doing well for Leighton Orient this season. He's had quite a few games for us uh, as well in his first couple of years, but uh, he is going to need some first team action to get uh, his stats up. Ivor Lawton's just a young youth player, comes through the academy. He's got good potential according to my assistant report, but I definitely need to see some improvement in his stats this season if I'm going to be giving him another uh, another couple of years at the club um, but like I said his potential is three and a half stars he does look like a pretty decent player and Jordan Forrester this is probably going to be his last season at the club unless he can majorly improve on some of those stats as a striker he needs his finishing up um, he's got a decent bit of composure but I'd like to see his pace getting a bit better and his heading with him being six foot two as well um, but he's going to loan to Altrincham on deadline day so we'll see how he does <clears throat> so that takes up all the outs let's start on the ins uh, these first two are Germans found them in the uh, I think it was the under 19 squad of Germany and they've been released by their clubs this guy Christoph Testrut um, has got some really good uh, stats in free kick taking he's got a really long throw on him fantastic pace and natural fitness um, he just needs to get some of these stats up just a little bit, uh, I'd like to see some more stamina and strength in him but he was released by uh, Schalke he's made a couple of appearances for us so far but I'm not expecting him to make massive inroads this season but I think he can be a really good player in the future Adam Newidomski uh, joined from um, I believe it was Bayern, yeah, Bayern Munich um, he's made one appearance for us so far he's a really good playmaker he's got the key, key attributes that a playmaker needs um, show you now advanced playmaker where is it there we go sorry about that so first touch passing technique work rate teamwork could be a little bit better flair decisions creativity and stamina all the key attributes he's got double figures for them so it's a really good start he's a quality midfielder and he's only 18 years old um, I think he can be a really really key player in our future um, next in was Alban Meha uh, went through uh, the deal with him in the previous episode he's been injured since he came in so he hasn't made an appearance as yet but he looks like a decent midfielder who can definitely do a job for us this season and uh, we'll see how he does as regards whether we want to keep him or not at the end of the season but he, he's definitely got at least another year or two left in him at the age of 29 uh, Cillian Smith was next in he's been loaned out to the Neaton he was the young goalkeeper I bought him from Merview United uh, on a, uh, for 90 grand I did the deal last season he's been on loan at Bradford and Bristol City in the past couple of years so I've loaned him out to the Neaton to definitely 
to get him some first team football maybe improve his stats um, so hopefully he can do a good job for them he's getting a good average range so that's pleasing to see next in was Filippo Clementini he was a Milan midfielder uh, he can also play in defence uh, he's been released by the Milan youth side he's got some really good stats tackling, marking, passing as well heading, he's a really good holding midfielder as well as play, being able to play at the back uh, he's got a bit of pace about him he is a bit short for a centre half so if I am playing him I'm likely to be using him in the holding role um, but I'd like to see him get some strength up if he is going to play in that position but he's on loan at Bournemouth anyway this season so he gets some first team football there next in was Ben Davis on a free transfer I thought this was a pretty decent squad player to bring in and he doesn't want too much in wages either at 3,800 uh, tackling's decent, marking's decent pass, uh, pace is good he's got some good work rate and teamwork to get up and down the line uh, it came in from Swansea after being released from them so um, he's had a couple of seasons on loan um, since he came in, since the start of the game but he hasn't had too much football in the past couple of years but we'll hope, be hoping to give him some uh, some rotation play here at this season uh, Ronnie Wubshet was a regen who I bought in French striker 6 foot 2 16 finishing 16 dribbling 16 composure and 11 pace it's going to take him a little while just to settle in uh, he's been on he was at Lille I think or was it Lyon Stad Rene got it completely wrong um, but he's got some fantastic potential I think and uh, he can definitely uh provide us some squad depth this season and uh, if he can get some of these these are the stats up like technique uh, work rate as well decisions I'll definitely be uh, putting him in as my first team striker uh, Scott Dan has come in to replace uh, William Edging Gwaley at centre back big strong defender um, he's got some a little bit of pace about him 6 foot 2 as well good tackling marking and defending uh, and heading sorry He's been at Blackburn and then he was uh, he's come to us on a free transfer. He was at us for a couple of seasons in real life as well before. Um, so he's returning to the club and he's definitely got the potential to be a top defender for us and our first choice centre half. And he has come in as our new captain to take over from Edge and Gwaley. Next in was Nick Proschwitz from uh, Hull on a free transfer. He's got he's six foot four, so sixteen heading and 17 jumping is going to be a massive uh, aid to us because it means he's going to be able to get up and beat the defenders in the air great target man to use he's got 14 finishing to go with that 12 composure and 12 pace for a big man is pretty decent so I'll be looking to get him some uh, for him to be scoring some goals he's our first team striker he's scored a few goals for Hull but he hasn't been getting too much first team action the past couple of seasons but we'll be hoping that he can uh, turn that round for us and maybe uh, get some goals if he's getting some first team action next in was Scott Wooten he was uh, released by Man United uh, at their academy he went to Bristol City and Bristol City released him at the end of last season so it's kind of a swap deal for Nikolai Topol Stanley we've taken him and they've taken uh, Topol Stanley he's a good defender he's got some really good stats in the key areas um, tackling, marking, heading's brilliant uh, jumping 16 he's six foot one as well he's got really good strength as well and a bit of pace on him so pleasing to see and he could be a really good uh, backup defender for Dan and uh, Miquel and then we brought in Emiliano Cassim from Vélez Sarsfield on loan for the season um, this guy has got fantastic potential he's an Argentine under 20 international 17 games 14 goals uh, it's going to take him a little bit of time to adjust as the same with Wubshet he's not played in England before uh, but 16 finishing, 17 heading, he's 6 foot 1 as well. He's got pace on him, off the ball is really good as well. So hopefully he'll be able to really improve. And I've got th that means I've got three really good strikers if they can get used to English football um, to choose from, which is pleasing to see. And last in was Joaquin Reno, uh, done by my director of football. Uh, he's come in for 275 grand from Barcelona B team. He's played a lot of football for them recently. Uh, the last couple of years he's been playing non-stop for them. 76 appearances. He only scored 11 goals, and but he's got 14 assists in that time as well. And his average ratings are really good. So he's already got a goal for us. Uh, he can play on either flank, which is good news. Uh, might be training him to be an attacking midfielder in the future. Uh, but he's got some good 
good pace uh, and stamina and the uh, agility as well which is good for a winger means he can jink in and out maybe improve his flair a bit and his passing but free kick taking his quality he's got really good corners crossing and dribbling which is what you need from a, a winger so that's the transfers all done you're up to date so we'll get on to the pre-season fixtures for you so we started with a a friendly against Arsenal, we had a few, we had a couple of money ones, this one was one of them. I only got 22,800 for it, I was pretty disappointed, but a 2-0 defeat against Arsenal isn't too bad. Obviously they are one of the better sides in England and you're always going to struggle a bit against them. But a decent performance by the lads, apart from Cheryshev, not many players, players got below 6.7. Um, so it was pleasing to see that. We then drew 1-1 at home to Norwich, who obviously were promoted to the Premiership last season. So they got a decent side, and it was a good performance by the lads. The goal from uh, Bebe was the only goal of the game for us. And a 1-1 draw was a good result. We then went away to Ebb's Fleet, which we should have been winning that one. Um, but we didn't. It was a ball draw, 0-0. Um, lots of 6.7s, 6.8s in there. Uh, not good performance by the lads. Uh, we should have been winning that 3 or 4-0. We then drew 1-1 away at Sheffield United who were relegated from our league last season. Uh, Connor Thomas with the only goal of the game for us. Uh, it was, If you look at it, there's a lot of sevens in there. So it was a good performance by the lads. Just the finishing wasn't quite up to standard. We then played San Etienne at home and lost 2-1. Uh, Bebe getting the goal for us in this game. It, it was a difficult game to play. They're a good side. Uh, one of the top, top sides in France. So... Uh, 2-1 defeat isn't too bad, but a 4-1 defeat against Stad Rene wasn't ple wasn't very good. Uh, Connor Thomas with the only goal for us. Uh, as you can see, the stats for everyone was the average ratings were pretty poor, apart from Thomas, the only man getting over seven. We then played Alfreton away and won 1-0. It was Bebe on the score sheet again with his third goal of pre-season, uh, getting the only goal of the game. 1-0 win, not a brilliant result against a team as uh, low down as Alfreton. But it was a win nevertheless. But the next game was fantastic. A 2-0 win over Werder Bremen. Uh, Nick Proschwitz getting his first goal. And Frank Musa getting the other. A really, really top performance by the lads against the very good German side. Uh, to get our pre-season, to finish our pre-season off. And uh, hopefully we can go into the Empire Championship with that bit of confidence and do well. But the next game was against Hull at home in the Empire Championship. And we were beaten 1-0 in a last-minute uh, goal for them. Tuba Akpom with the goal after 92 minutes. It was a very tight game possession-wise, but if you look at the chances Hull had, 11 to our 7 and 5 on target to our 1, it just wasn't a good performance for us, uh, which was a bad one. Um, and we needed to bounce back. For the Capital One Cup game away at Torquay, I rotated the entire out, out, outfield uh, 10, and it didn't work. Uh, we conceded two second half goals to Billy Bowden and went out 2-0. Uh, we had slightly more possession, but chances wise they created just as many as we did. We just didn't finish any of ours off, which was a, a very disappointing side. And uh, I was disappointed because that's the th uh, third season in a row now. We've gone out to Exeter and Gillingham in previous seasons. We've not got past the first round since we joined uh, the Championship. We then played Bristol City away, and Bristol City were a decent side, so a 1-1 draw wasn't bad, but in the the way it came was not pleasing. Proschwitz got his first competitive goal for the club after 51 minutes to give us the lead, and it wasn't until the 90th minute when Danny Drinkwater equalised for Bristol City. Um, as you can see, we had more chances on target, less shots, but um, the possession was there for us away from home was good, but I was disappointed to lose it in the last minute like that. Um, it would have been a good three points for us. We then played Swindon at home. Now I would have been expecting to win this, but a nil-nil draw came about. It was a poor game, very even um, all over the pitch. Really, they didn't have as many shots on target, but everywhere else, it was it was dead even. Um, but a boring nil-nil draw came about, and we need to start turning these draws into wins because, as you can see, we've had a lot of uh, we've had four draws from the six games. We then drew one-one away at Peterborough. Um, Joaquin Reyna after 10 minutes giving us the lead but again we re we conceded an equaliser through Islam Ferris on the stroke at half time on the scheme of th grand scheme of things they could have actually won this game they had more possession 
only slightly, but they had a lot more chance than us and double the amount of to on target. Um, so to get out with a 1-1 draw probably was a good result for us, but uh, taking the lead, I'm disappointed that we can't hold on to these leads or, or even capitalise on them and make them bigger leads. We then drew 0-0 at home to uh, Crystal Palace. That's three home games and no goals scored so far. Uh, it was another boring game. Um, we had probably the better of the shots, but we couldn't hit the target on the day. More possession. I was disappointed to see that we couldn't turn that possession into a victory. Um, but as you can tell, our defence is doing pretty well. We're pretty strong in the defensive area, but our attacking ability is finding us left out at the moment. We then played newly promoted Wigan and lost 2-1. They've still got a very good side, though. Still got the likes of De Santo. Um, they've got Carl Henry as well. So they've got a good side. It was a very even game on the day, so I thought a draw was a fair result. But they took the lead 70 minutes in through Callum McManaman and two minutes from the end Franco De Santo made it 2 Ronnie Wubshet did get his first goal for the club in injury time to make it 2-1 but unfortunately we couldn't it was way too late to be able to find an equaliser but we need to start scoring some more goals if we score goals I've got no doubts we can start winning games because our defensive record is very good so that is the that is us up to date I'll show you the championship quickly we are 19th in the league Four draws and two defeats from six games. No wins as yet. But we've only got a minus two goal difference, which is good. Hartlepool obviously getting battered pretty much every game. Minus 13 goal difference. Um, but we aren't that far away. If we can try and turn some of these draws into wins, then maybe we can uh, get, up the, get up the league a bit. Uh, a couple of wins and we will be up to mid-table. I said to the board before the season we need 14th or 15th. It was around about a respectable league position. But unfortunately, we're not living up to their standards as yet. But um, I've developed a good relationship with the board, so they're not going to sack me willy-nilly, which is good to see. But we'll uh, we'll just have to try and kick on and get some results now. So that does draw to, to an, an end to the episode. So I'll get on to what the next episode will be. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a two-monthly review, so we'll go through these games, play up to Bolton, and then I'll come back for a live com against Millwall, at the start of November uh, in that midweek game at the New Den. So guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, please do give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And for now, I'll see you soon, guys. Bye.